quick sound test. Uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, the first one was all about managed accounts. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is give you an idea of how it works at a professional firm, um, like uh, like Smile, basically. So I'll do the introductions, let you guys know who who I am and what we're doing, um, and then we can go from there. So uh, first of all, my name is Jarrett Davis, and I am head of FX at um, Smile Global Management, which is a, a an investment management company based in London. Um, Sorry about that, just getting this um, headset plugged in. Uh, we are one of the only managed account firms that are regulated by the FCA. Uh, and we're part of a, a, a larger group called Independent Portfolio Managers, IPM. Uh, and as a group, they manage over $250 million uh, worth of assets for anything from sovereign wealth funds to pension funds around the world. And SMILE is part of that group and what Smile specializes in is, is FX managed accounts. Well we specialize in FX and equities actually. But it's the management, you know, the managed account uh, part that we focus on as a firm. Now that's particularly interesting to retail traders such as those watching this. Um, because obviously you guys are interested in how to trade FX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an insight into how we train our traders at Smile basically. Um, so obviously we're trading the FX markets, Forex markets what things are we teaching them? What things are we focusing on? What you know? What are our professional traders doing every day in order to make money? That's basically what we're going to look at. Um, now, obviously, we haven't got very long, 30 minutes to 45 minutes to, to cover all that. So we're not going to be going into too much depth. But hopefully, by the end of it, you'll get a really good idea or a really good insight into what we're doing. And, and basically, what we do isn't some uh, proprietary secret. This is basically how pretty much every other firm um, and trading desk in banks and, and funds around the world. This, this will be basically they'll they'll be doing the same thing in essence, same kind of training, same kind of focus. Um, now, just for, before we get going, for everyone watching this on the recording, I know there's quite a few people doing that. Um, if you've got any questions you want to ask, please email. That's you know we'll get we'll go over those in an email. If you are watching this live and you have a question, ju just type it into the chat box at any time. And what I'll do is I'll go over the question at the end. So I'm not going to answer questions as we go, but I, if you type it in at any time, I will go come back and go over all those um, later on. So without further ado, let's get going. Let's get into um, our first uh, section. And, and what I want to do first is just look at why retail traders lose money. So if you've been struggling to trade, if you've been finding it difficult um, to get going with your trading, we're going to have a look at why that is. Um, and there's probably three mistakes that you're making, pretty much, if you're if you're struggling to lose money to make money. The first one is something called switching. Um, the second one is, of course, leverage. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit in a little bit more detail shortly. And then finally, something called overfocus. So again, we'll look at each one of these individually. So first of all, switching. What's switching? Switching. Uh, I'm going to describe to you a scenario, and you'll probably recognise it instantly. Um, switching is where you look on the internet for a strategy or a system, you know, something along the lines of, you know, when this thing turns blue, you buy it. If this thing turns red, you sell it. Uh, all very mechanical, You're just waiting for the little thing to give you your little signal. Uh, basically, waiting for some indicator to do all the work. And then you get into your trades and you either win or you lose. You know, there's various different rules to each little system or strategy, but that's essentially what you're trying to find, some system. And then you you find the system, it looks amazing, then you back test it for a week or two, and it looks even more amazing. And then what you'll do then is you'll, on Monday morning, you'll get up really excited, you'll go live, and by Wednesday, you'll no longer be trading that system because the results that you've achieved in the first two or three days are nothing like what happened in the back test. They're nothing like the back test results. You'll quickly lose heart. And then what will you do? The next thing you'll do is you'll go on to the internet again to try and find another system. And that whole process repeats. And that's what you just switch from one strategy to the next strategy to the other strategy, following that rough template. Um, and if you've tried to trade more than three strategies over the next over the last six months, then unfortunately you're a switcher. Um, and that's the most that's the biggest thing that will hold you back. And the reason it will hold you back is because of the psychological element. So if you think about it, 
what are you trying to achieve? Well, you're trying to find a strategy that makes money. So if you think to yourself, well, that's that's a good thing, right? So you, you know, if you're if you're, you're doing is searching for a strategy that makes money, then you know, when you look for the next one, um, then you know, in theory, if you find it, then you're going to be making money. That's good for your trading. Well, what actually happens is you find a strategy, you trade it until it loses you money, and then you stop and you repeat the cycle. So every time you stop trading a strategy in a loss, and then you move to the next one, and you trade that to a loss, and then you move to the next one. And you trade that to the loss. So all that's ever going to happen is your equity curve is going to go lower and lower and lower, down, 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 because all you're ever doing is trading these strategies into a loss. So that's why switching never works. That's why switching is one of the biggest killers for retail traders. Now, switching on its own isn't necessarily that bad. The problem comes when you when you focus on the second thing, which of course is leverage. And leverage just means you're risking higher amounts to, to make higher amounts, basically. So for instance, if you're trying to double your account every month, then you're going to be using a lot of leverage. But the problem is it, you've got an equal chance of wiping your entire account out in a month or less by using that leverage. And if you combine that with switching, um, you, you almost guarantee to lose all your money, basically, which is probably why you know, the big fact of 95% of traders, retail traders lose money. That's got nothing to do with how difficult trading is or um, you know that trading is a mugs game and no one makes money from trading because plenty of people do make money from trading um, you know some of the biggest biggest hedge fund managers in the world you know think of Steve Cohen he's till recently had billions under management he's worth himself four or five billion dollars his annual salary is about six hundred million dollars and what does he do he day trades stocks he's he equate he equates to one percent the daily volume of the stock market and he's day trading um, so that and that's how he's got to that position where he is now so lots of people even the big boys do it, so it definitely is possible. But the reason why so many people fail is because they basically make these mistakes. So that not only are they switching, but then they're using too much leverage, and the combination of that um, kills them. Now the third thing is another thing most retail traders do, and that's overfocus. And generally, the overfocus is on one particular element. And, and normally, I'd say nine times out of ten, the average retail trader is overfocused on technical analysis. So that, that, what they're doing is they'll, they'll get a chart and they'll literally just look at that chart and nothing else. And they'll be look, waiting for their little signal or price action or whatever it is they're looking for on the chart to just give them all the information. And that is absolutely not how professional traders trade. So if you combine those three, if you're doing one of those three, you're going to, well, you're going to lose money. If you're doing all three, you've got absolutely no chance of ever succeeding um, as a trader and from a professional's point of view, basically. Um, so they're the things. Now I'm almost certain a lot of you guys watching this, even those on the recording, are, are sitting there thinking, you know what, this is what, at least one of those is what I do. Um, and if it is, don't give up hope because I'm going to go through exactly what it is we teach in just a moment. So they're the mistakes you're making, first of all. Um, and you know, I'm sure you can relate to that, and I'm sure you've had experience of that at, at least at some point in your trading. So that's the bad news. That's why you're losing money. What's the good news? Well, what we're going to look at now is what professional firms teach. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through what we teach as a company, uh, our traders coming through. Um, and we're also going to go through some of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Some of the um, kind of biggest factors or the biggest common denominators between the professional traders we have. Because obviously, you know, at Smart, we've got a lot of professional traders sat at the desks, um, and they've, they've, they all trade in a different way, but they all use the same core concepts um, to make money, basically. And uh, it's, a, it's when they veer away from these concepts that they lose money. So even professional traders lose when they kind of come away from the, the proven concepts. So what is it that professional firms, what do we teach our junior traders at Smile? Well, um, Basically, we're going to look at them right now. So, we'll go through these things one by one. The first thing, and the first thing is, and this is probably where all retail traders fall down, is that we give all of our traders a fundamental understanding of the markets first and foremost. So, you should know, you know, if you can't answer some of these questions, then you, you haven't got a fundamental understanding of the markets. So, you need to know the history of the futures market. Why? Does speculative trading exist? 
what purpose does it serve for you and me and everyone else to be sat at the computer trying to take money out of the markets? There's a purpose to that. It's not just, you know, unnecessary. A lot of people, and particularly in the media these days, a lot of people kind of slate te um, speculative traders for causing risk in the markets, etc. Well, as speculative traders, we actually eliminate risk. We take risk out of the markets. And it's very important to understand our role in there. We help the markets no end. We actually provide a valuable, valuable service uh, just by sitting at our computers trying to make money. And it, it, you know, that might surprise you, but that's one of the most fundamental basic understandings of the market that you should have. So the futures market is the key to everything. You need to understand how the FX markets relate to the other asset classes like equities, uh, bonds, um, all that stuff, commodities, how they all link together, uh, where, where we are in terms of what our place in the markets is. All the basic stuff as a foundation, you should have an understanding of those fundamentals. So if you come into the markets just to try and learn what a pip is and then try and find a strategy to follow, you've got absolutely no chance because you just don't have that depth and understanding of the markets because that is going to come in useful later on and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. So that's the first thing you need. So if you can't answer any of those questions, if you don't understand what the futures markets are, if you don't understand why we exist as speculators and what good purpose we serve, you know, you, you, you're literally trying to trade with two hands tied behind your back uh, with a blindfold on, the first thing, okay? Now, once you've got that basic understanding, so once we train our junior traders with a basic understanding of the markets, um, the other thing that they're encouraged to do is go off and do their own independent research. So if we talk through the, the futures market, they will then be expected to go away and, you know, if they've got any questions, go over those and really get a good grasp and a good understanding on their own, you know, in their own right. Once they have that, the first thing they're focused on or the biggest thing they're focused on every day is something called news flows. And the news flow is basically exactly what is moving the markets, what's driving the sentiment, what, why traders are buying or selling different currencies, basically what's going on. So, for example, um, you know, you think last week the markets were behaving ridiculously crazy. You know, you look at the, the yen pairs, for example, pound, yen, Aussie yen, euro yen, or whatever yen pair you want to pick out, you'll notice that the yen pairs generally were falling over the last couple of weeks. Well, that's not by accident. The reason for that is because we were in a risk-off mode because of everything that's going on in China, um, concerns over whether the Fed will hike in 2015. All that stuff was coming together to create a risk-off environment, which created a sentiment of fear, which means that the market participants are going to try and trade into safe assets. And the Japanese yen, of course, is the biggest safe haven currency there is. So it, when you know the market's getting scared, the first thing you want to do is buy Japanese yen uh, and sell a yen pair because that's generally most likely the thing that's going to happen. Okay, so the news flows are vital so that you can be tuned into exactly what's happening and what's going on in the markets. Like we said before, if you're just staring at a price chart, you're going to have a very difficult time understanding what's going on. And if you don't understand why the market's moving, then you're not going to have any confidence in your position. Okay, so if you've just sold a yen pair and you know that, you know, Armageddon's about to hit and everything's going, you know, everything hitting the fan, you're going to have real good confidence that the yen's going to rally, basically. Those yen pairs are going to fall because traders are going to get scared and panic's going to spread. You're just going to have a higher level of conviction in your positions. You know, if the Bank of England have just unexpectedly hiked rates uh, completely out the blue, you know that the pound is going to keep rallying. Whereas if you're just staring at a price chart, you've got no idea why the pound's going up. You've got no idea whether it's a good reason or a bad reason, and therefore you don't know whether it's going to continue or whether you should be selling into it, whether you should be buying into it. It just makes your life much harder when you don't have that knowledge and conviction, that's all. So news flows are what we train our traders to focus on first and foremost. We've got lots of different tools for that, which we're going to look at in a moment. Um, but basically, you've got two types. You've got um, what we call lagging news, and then you've got real-time news. And real-time news is basically expensive. So, for example, if you want a, a Bloomberg terminal, which is one of the most famous trading tools, you've probably heard of it, that costs around about uh, $24,000 a year, and um, you're in a two-year contract. So, in order to get access to the premium news, you're going to have to foot up $50,000 pretty much uh, up front just to access that news. So, there's not, it's not that expensive by accident. The reason the news is the most expensive tool that traders employ 
is for a very good reason. It's because what the big boys use, that's what that's where the money is, basically. Okay, news flows is where the money is. Hence why there's a rules and in information and edge and advantage. And you probably may or may not know that certain terminals like Reuters Icon, Bloomberg Terminal, they some of those terminals have deals where they get news releases a little bit faster than everywhere else. Just little things like that are why institutions pay money for those news flows. So what we're going to do before we move on is we're going to look at, just to take a little quick look at these news flows, and we're going to look at a Reuters icon feed, um, because this is basically um, this is basically the one of the biggest things to trade. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if you guys can see this. So this is a this is what a, this is what a basically a, um, a, a real time news feed looks like essentially, um, and you'll see the news coming through. Uh, the news ticks in. You can literally by the second, like you know, every 20 sec, 10 or 20 seconds, there's news coming through, um, and each one of these headlines is clickable. And basically, you know, if you want to know what's going on at the desk of a bank or a proprietary trading firm, you know, this information is basically what uh, professional traders are looking at effectively on any given day. So you're basically, you know, Reuters Icon and Bloomberg Terminal are both very detailed, in-depth tools. You can set this feed to basically feed in whatever news you want, like currencies, obviously, FX, central banks, all that stuff going in. So this is the basis, and there's lots of news feeds. You've got companies like Reuters, Bloomberg, MNI, IFR. There's loads of firms that specialize in premium news feeds, which traders pay for. And if you had access to every feed, the cost of having access to every newsfeed is basically around about £30,000 every month. That's the cost of the news. And, it, and it, like I said before, it's, the reason it's that expensive is because that's where the money is, basically. That's where the big boys are making the money. Now, let me just get rid of this for a second. So what we do, now there's one thing, one more thing I just want to go over. That's the, that's the premium news feeds. Now, there is a way around that. So if we just... Um, Try and get the screen up here so you guys can see. Let me try and now there's what we talked about the news. So first of all, one of the big ones that we use is Bloomberg Currencies. So you can see Bloomberg, you know, Bloomberg slash topic slash currencies. This is all the news relating to FX. This is the market moving news. So if you want to know why Chinese yuan has dropped, if you want to know why the Japanese yen has gone up, or whatever's happened, maybe the pound's rallying. You can find out here. This is kind of lagging news. This will tell you what's been going on over the last 24 hours. And it will just set the theme in your head about what currencies are moving where. Now, the other thing I like is a, is a site called Forex Live. And this is more like a kind of like a blog, like a real-time blog. But it basically gives you the news as it happens. And most importantly, it gives you the analysis as well. So the guys behind this blog, it's free. But this is one of the things I have on my screen. It will you know, tell you what had happened quicker than Bloomberg. That, the, the free Bloomberg I'm talking about, but it also add their analysis. So it'll be like, this has happened, and this is what it could mean for this currency and that currency. So again, it just gives you a nice, good, better understanding of exactly what's moving the markets and why. And then finally, we talked about the, the premium news feed of uh, Reuters that we just looked at. Well, if you haven't got 30,000 or even 2,000 pounds a month to spend on news, which obviously most retail traders don't have, then there is a there is another version of the retime news that you can get, which is actually very useful. So we use a company called Ransquark, and basically it's an analyst house. And what they do is they set there, got like 10 or 15 analysts sat in front of about 60 or 70 screens with all these news feeds on. And what they'll do is that they will report and squawk the market moving news. So if something happens in the FX markets to move the FX markets, you'll see the headline come through here, and it will be a bit of analysis. And it will also there's an audio squawk as well to alert you immediately to what's going on. And this is also useful for headline figures coming out. So NFPs being released. These guys will squawk the NFP release before you can get it on any other retail calendar. You know, it, it's, it's, it, this, is, this kind of thing costs tens to hundreds of pounds a month, which, of course, is much cheaper than thousands to tens of thousands, obviously. So these are the kind of tools that we're using in order to get the information advantage to get that news quickly so that we can then use that information, you know, to, um, well, basically make money in the markets, okay? So let me just give you an example. Um, so if we go back, one of the tools that we use, obviously, in the UK, uh, because we're based in the UK, we look at, the, they have a daily European opening news section here, which we're going to look at quickly. And in the daily European opening news, you'll notice there is, uh, when it comes up, an FX section. 
And in the FX section, it tells you exactly what currencies were moving in the previous session. Most importantly, it tells you the reasons why. So for today, you can see that the biggest movers were the Japanese yen weakening and the Australian dollar rallying. So for the London session, there's a fairly good probability, you know, 60, 70% chance that the Australian dollar Japanese yen pair is going to go up in today's session. So we're looking for that to get over 8,300. We're looking for that to get to like 8,330s, 8,340s in the session um, because of the news that's happened and, and basically it's highlighted the currencies that are actually moving. And if you think about it, when the, when the traders come to their desks, they're all reading the same news, they're all looking at the same things, and they're all going to be tempted into the same position, which of course is what gets the currencies moving. Okay, so it's just a, a, a just a little snippet, a little example of how we look at the markets and how we get our traders um, to analyze. And this is what the professionals are doing, basically. This is what professional traders are looking at every day in order to give them trades. Okay, so that is um, that's an example of news flows. That's how it works. Now, once you've understood the fundamentals of the market, once you understand the news flows and how to read it and what to look for, there are then some key things that you need to pay attention to as a trader, and we call them the four pillars of trading. Okay, The four pillars of trading are fundamental analysis, risk management, technical analysis, and trading psychology. Okay, They're the four pillars. Now, risk management is the most important thing, and this is what we talked about before when, when new traders over leverage. A professional trader will very rarely use leverage. Normally, professional traders don't use leverage. Okay, Now, if they do, they're only using it on trades where they see an absolute like 90% chance of the trade winning. Maybe some news has come out or everything lined, all the ducks are lined up and they're only taking those risks on those absolute peach trades. Normally, professional traders aren't using leverage. Okay? That's the first revelation maybe a lot of uh, uh, retail traders would be surprised to learn. And risk management is much more... Uh, than about just how much you risk on each position. Risk management encompasses everything. Risk management encompasses um, what your mental state is. You know, let's say you've just been out on the beers the night before and you come in a bit hungover. That's bad risk management because you're not going to be concentrating fully. You've got a higher chance of losing money. Okay? Maybe, maybe it could be anything as small as your desk in your office being a mess, so you can't really focus and concentrate. That's bad risk management because you're, you know, reducing your ability. Even if it's like by 0.1%. You're reducing your ability to concentrate 100%, and of course, then that reduces your ability to make money. Okay, so risk management is all about your overall plan, um, not just about how much you're risking on each trade. Risk management is a, is a thing that you need to encompass to your whole entire business. And we try and get our traders looking at trading like a business. Okay, so it's their business. They've got to analyse their costs. They've got to analyse what elements could cost them money, whether that's removing their focus disrupting their concentration or just risking too much on a position. Whatever it is, risk management is an all-encompassing thing. It's very, very important that the trader stays focused because the minute they lose focus of risk management, that's generally when the trader goes down the toilet uh, and you know wipes out six months or even a year's worth of profits um, in a mad half a day, okay? which happens regularly on trading desks around the world. Okay? It's the human error more than anything. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is technical analysis. And this is where retail traders will be most familiar, because lots of people just focus on this. But technical analysis should only be, and is only, a side added to it. So, for example, let's say we know today we want to be buying Aussie dollar Japanese yen pair, right? Let's say we know well, we've got a very high chance it's going to get into the 83s, 83.30s, 83.40s. Then we want to do that. So then what you do then is you, now you've got your pair, then you go to your charts, and now you look for your technicals. So you look for a nice entry point. You look for a way, you know, maybe a trade management strategy, um, stop loss placement. Technical analysis can help with all this, but it's kind of like the icing on the cake rather than the cake itself. Uh, and that's where technical analysis comes in. That's how we teach our traders to approach technicals. So you get all the information first, and then you just need to pinpoint where you're going to get in and where you place your stops, or maybe where you're going to take profits. That's where you're going to make your money. So that's where technicals comes in useful. And technicals is a big one. You know, we use common concepts in our firm. So, for example, again, we haven't got long to go over all this, so I'll just kind of skim over it. The technical analysis concepts we use are pivot points, support and resistance, Fibonacci, um, and that's pretty much it, really. We do, we do look at moving averages to see where the price has moved in relation to its average, uh, but we're not looking at trading crossovers or anything like that. Uh, we do focus on 
quite heavily look at the ADR. So we look at the average daily range of a pair. That helps with you know stop loss placement and targets. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then apart from that, we do obviously also look at price actions, very important as well. But generally, the structure of the trade, you know, we know what we want to be buying. We know roughly where it wants, where we want it to go before we even start looking at the charts. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. So technicals is important, but nowhere near as important as most retail traders, you know, put the emphasis on. The final pillar, and this is the reason I've left it to last, is because it's the most important, is trading psychology. Okay. Trading psychology is where we bring professionals in. So we actually bring in professional outside psychologists to work with the traders um, in the firm. And that's something that every hedge fund and every bank will do. Uh, and there's some serious money spent on that as well. It's not cheap. Um, and a trading psychologist is, it can literally be the difference between a trader losing all his money and a trader staying on point and actually becoming nice and profitable and, and steady and consistent. Uh, trading psychology is what the professionals focus on. OK, so let's say, for example, for me, I've been trading over 10 years. Uh, I've got a very good track record over those years. Um, you know, obviously head of effects at Smile, but I never stop focusing on the trading psychology part because psychology is something that's ever changing. It's fluid. It's something that everyone always needs to work on. And I always I, mean, I do put some focus on that. So, for example, I'm not there looking for new risk, uh, technical analysis strategies. I'm absolutely not interested in that. I know enough about technical analysis, you know, to plateau and. It's never, I'm never going to be able to get better results. Um, risk management, the same. I know all about risk management. I know about not using leverage. You know, I know about preparing yourself for the day. But psychology, that's where, if I'm going to fall down, that's where I'll fall down. So, for example, one of my biggest faults as a trader is something called FOMO. And, and FOMO is an acronym that we use in trading, and it basically stands for the fear of missing out. So, but my biggest weakness sometimes is I'll get into a position because I don't want to miss the move. And then that will result in a bad entry, which results in larger drawdowns, you know, which end up wiping out, you know, a day or two or a week's worth of profits or whatever it is. Uh, and in the end, it's very frustrating. I'm kind of kicking myself because deep down I knew I shouldn't have done it, but I just had a bit of FOMO and, you know, succumbed to it. And that's what happened. And that's the kind of thing that professional traders suffer with. You know, different from each one, but FOMO is a classic example. So by going over the psychological side of it, it keeps me in check and it stops me from succumbing to those things because I'm always keeping those things in mind. So you'll see at the bottom here, we've got the process for training a junior trader at the firm. OK, so the process for doing that is, first of all, we teach them the skills. So first of all, they will learn the skills. OK, that's the that's the first. That's the easy part. We can teach someone the skills in you know a day, two days. There's not that much to learn about trading. Then the next thing is to practice the skills. So you're not just going to pick it up and then go off and make, you know, it's not going to be raining money from day one. That's just unrealistic. It doesn't that's not how it works. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to practice the skills. Okay. And that's we're going to come on to this a little bit later, but basically there is a process of improvement. So if you're let's say you're on average losing 10% a month right now, well, the first thing you need to do in your practice, you need to monitor your progress, and your first step will be to just lose less than 10%. So if you can if you can suddenly get to the point where you're only losing 5%, that's progress, okay? And then you work your way up to uh, break even. So now you're breaking even, which is good progress. And then of course you pop your head into profit, and maybe you're making you know 0.1 or half a percent a month. And then over time your percentages will go up, and you'll get to a, a level of competence where you're actually making consistent money. Um, you know, you're never going to be perfect, but that's the goal you're getting for. So a lot, another mistake retail traders make is they think that once they've learned this strategy, they're going to then go on and become instantly profitable. And that's not how it works. Trading is a profession, just like being a lawyer, being a doctor, uh, being an accountant, whatever you want to liken it to, any profession. And you know, no one just comes and does brain surgery after reading a few books and you know having a week's worth of training. It's a, it's a, it's a constant, consistent process of learning where you take one step at a time and you see the improvement. And then you move up to the next step and so on. Trading is exactly the same. And that's the approach that we take with all of our junior traders. Now, in a bank, a proprietary firm like Smile, we'll get traders trading money maybe after six months, uh, six or 12 months, if they've got a good track record after that, we'll, we'll, they'll be trading money, basically. And then we'll try and move them up. So it's a fairly rapid process. At a bank, you think of a large investment bank, think of someone like UBS or HSBC, Deutsche Bank, Barclays, wherever, on their trading desks, 
uh, very often a trader, a junior trader, will be sat with his kind of mentor for like three or four years before they actually start trading money. So that's the reality of it. So, you know, proprietary firms like ours, it's a little bit more rapid, probably very rapid. Six months to 12 months is, is really rapid. Um, normally on a bank, it's like three years. So that just gives you an idea of the process of development. OK, so if you're getting frustrated with yourself because you're not making money after two weeks, just, you know, maybe take a step back and kind of um, try and have realistic expectations of what's going on. But I can assure you, even if it takes you a couple of years, once you get there, that's a skill you've got for life. And if you can trade one market, you can trade any market. So you can trade, you can trade FX, you can trade gold, you can trade oil, you can trade equities, because it's roughly the same kind of analysis. We're looking for that fundamental understanding of the markets. We're looking at the news flows, which gives us the reasons why the market's moving. And it also gives us the confidence and conviction in our positions. And then, of course, it's just a case of focusing on risk management, the technicals, and, of course, trading psychology. And all of that applies to any market you can think of. OK, and that's another important thing to bear in mind. So it, it market you can think of. OK, and that's another important thing to bear in mind. So it, it might be frustrating at the start, but it's definitely worth the wait because it is, like I said, a skill you've got uh, and will have for the rest of your life. So let's have a little look now. Um, just just I just want to kind of wrap up this. I mean, like I said, we haven't got that long. So I just want to kind of wrap it up. Now I've given you an idea of what we're looking at. What are the biggest lessons um, for retail traders you guys should be looking at? So the first lesson I want you to remember here is that the key is not the strategy. OK, any little system or, you know, whether it's a moving average crossover system or whether it's um, a ridiculous combination of indicators, it doesn't matter. The key is not the strategy. That's not what's going to make you money. The key is your understanding of the markets, your approach, and having an idea of what exact the reasons why the market's moving. That's how I'd sum it up. Okay, it's not about what's what's happening; it's about why it's happening. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I'll go through is that switching um, is what will most likely stop you from becoming successful. So if you are a switcher, that's why you're not making money probably. So that's even if you don't take anything else away from this webinar. The fact that you recognize that you're a switcher is a, is a good start. Okay, this, you can, you can recognize that is a fantastic place to be because now you can work on that. The next biggest hurdle for retail traders, of course, is over leveraging. And not just retail traders, actually, you know, lots of professionals have the same issue. Um, you know, they get cocky and overconfident. That's another big one. That's not really something I've struggled, struggled with. But like I said, my, my problem is FOMO. But lo lots of traders I sit with and work with, their problem is their ego. So they, you know, they, they think they're the best trader in the world. So they think they can risk 10, 20 percent on a position. Then it goes wrong. Um, and then they're complete, their confidence is completely shot. So that's uh, a big, big issue. Then the, the, the fourth one there, of course, is that trading psychology and poor risk management is what stops most professional traders we just talked about. OK, so you're, you, it's very simple to understand how to trade. OK, from a professional perspective. Like I said, it takes, I mean, I think the course that we give our traders is about, um, I think it's about 10, 10 or 15 hours long. So, it's, you know, it's a few days worth of training, basically. Um, that's it. Once they've learned that, then the next thing is just go away and practice those skills. And after that point, once they've got, you know, I think, you, I think to reach competence, you need about 50 hours, 50 to 100 hours of practice, dedicated practice on something. And then you're pretty much competent. And then after that, it's all about the psychology and the risk management. That's it. It's literally as simple as that. Uh, there's no secrets. There's no hidden, um, you know, black box strategy that these guys are using. You'll hear, you know, for example, you'll hear, you'll hear about high frequency trading. You'll hear about algorithms and stuff like that. That's a completely different thing. That exists. But there's no, you know, generally most professional traders are, are just trading in this manner. Okay? There's no secrets being held back it's all about information and then finally if you follow the professional template that's your best chance of entering the top five percent of traders who are not wiping out their accounts and losing all their money okay and that's the template you need to go through and you need to follow um, and I'm sure maybe it's worth watching the recording of this so you can kind of write those down and go over them and maybe just put them you know it's worth 
maybe putting them next to your PC, just so you can see exactly what uh, the big boys are focusing on. So just before I finish, has anyone got any questions about the strategy, about the, how we trade? Um, I've tried to kind of give uh, go as in-depth as I can, so hopefully there won't be any questions. Um, that would be a good thing if there isn't, because that would mean you know, I've done my job. But if there is, please feel free to type them in and ask, um, and let us know. But that basically gives you an overview of exactly how professional traders operate and how it works at a firm like Smile, um, and basically how we train our junior traders. Um, and that's it. So I've managed to keep it below 45 minutes, which is which is uh, pretty cool. So hopefully uh, you guys have uh, found some benefit from that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give you guys a few minutes or a few seconds. If you've got any questions, type them in. Um, if not, I'll leave them. I'll leave that there. Um, and we'll leave it there. But I'll, let me just uh, go off here for just a few seconds just to give everyone time if there is any questions.